Say amen. And he brought him abroad, forth abroad, and said, Look now towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to name them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. So shall thy seed be. Look at someone and say, So shall thy seed be. Father, we look up unto heaven. Let your glory descend. Our connection to heaven is your visitation upon the earth. We connect, Lord. Let heaven descend. Give us heaven on earth this morning because I know it's your will. Amen. Abraham was a very unique servant uh, in Bible history. He was a man that I, I can't afford but to always study and look into the very intrigues why a man can be so favored by God. I have realized that God has the, the attribute of choosing people, of selecting people, and doing what he wants. One of the attributes of Jehovah is that he is the self-existing God who does what he wants. But everything God does is a need to us. God is so purposeful in his thinking, in his objectivity, in his manifestation. Therefore, in his acts, he is very focused. He is microscopically focused. He told Isaiah that just watch me as God. And look at the things I've done from the beginning until now. I am still the same. And I call the, the future from the past. And I declare the past into the future. I am God. And he said, and my will shall stand. The incredible mystery of life as children of God is in the fact that God in heaven can work through man without man's permission and by his own foreknowledge. Say hallelujah, somebody. The, the book of Romans says, for that which he did foreknow, he did predestinate. And that which he did predestinate, he called. That which he calls, he justifies. That which he justifies, he glorifies. So there is a journey into your glorification, which begins from the foreknowledge of God. So God thinks about you and sees the end of glory. And in between foreknowledge and glory, there is a predestination, a, pre, a predetermination. Then there is a calling and a justification. So these five steps, foreknowledge, predestination, predetermination, then the call, then the justification, they are, they are sandwiched by foreknowledge and glory. So how do I fulfill the glory of God? which was in his mind before the foundation of the world concerning me specifically, I need to be called. I need to receive my calling. I need to respond to my calling. And my calling is a package deal. Everything I'm supposed to be is in the calling. Everything I'm supposed to know is in the calling. Everything I'm supposed to do is in the calling. My times and my seasons are in the calling. The calling is the composite DNA of your purpose. Say hallelujah, somebody. Say hallelujah, somebody. The nucleus of your glory is in the thought of God. But the manifestation of it is in your calling. So the day God puts his hand upon you, there is a completion of the work. Because he doesn't call until he finishes the work. In other words, he calls you because he has finished it. The, 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 the manufacturer of, of cars, GM, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Toyota, Hyundai, 
they always finish the vehicle in the computer before it goes into the manufacturing line. They learned that from God. God always finishes his purpose before you are conceived in the womb. So the car that is yet to be manufactured is already complete in the computers. They see these days with animation, they drive it. They see the fullness of the vehicle, the leather, its capacity, its, its, its engine, its strength, its maneuverability, its weaknesses and strengths are all in the computer. So the engineer considered it's done. It's only a matter of time. So in the, for, in, in the fullness of time, we become what God wants us to be. King Solomon said, in his time, he makes all things beautiful. Which means my glory is in the hand of time. Look at someone and say, it's only a matter of time. Say it again, it's only a matter of time. So, so the, 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 the engineer finishes his design and he puts it into the hand of time. It's only a matter of time. So I tell the engineer, well, well, I need this car. I want to buy this car. It's designed. You can pay for it, even though it's in the computer, because it's as good as done in the computer. They'll tell you, you can pick up your car at the finish line in six months' time. So in the hand of time, your car is waiting. Your car is in process, or your car is accomplished. So you can pay and actually say, I have a car. So when God called you, he called you as done. You are done. I say you are done. I say you are done. Your future is done. As far as God is concerned, his purpose shall stand. His glory is already fulfilled. But you are in the process to connect. See, I'm listening. God called Abraham from Mesopotamia. And he gave him pro promises and, and prophecies. He said, leave your country, leave your tribe, leave your father's house, and I will make you a great nation. In other words, what God was saying is that that nation is already established. I need you to, to connect to my will. And that which is already a forethought, a foreknowledge, is in process to manifestation as a great nation which doesn't exist naturally, but will be existing when you connect by obedience. See, hallelujah, somebody. So, and the Bible says, and I will, I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse them that curse you. But he said, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. When God spoke that word to Abraham, he gave Abraham the the DNA of all nations. He put into Abraham's hand the key to all nations. He put into Abraham the gathering of all nations. I'm handling the subject today, the world. Say the world. One more time. Say it like again. Say it like you mean it. And by this, I'm talking about cosmos and eons. I'm talking about all the ages of the nations of the ages of the world and the cosmic reality of the facts of the tangibility of what we call nations. I do know that God is a God who thinks about nations. And when God speaks a word, nations move. In heaven, he sees the nations. He thinks about the nations. He moves into the nations. He has a future in the nations. He has his investment in the nations. And the kingdom of God is a nation on its own. You are not saying amen to this. See, hallelujah, somebody. When he told Abraham that in thee shall all the nations, all the families of the earth be blessed. Before he spoke about all the families of the earth be blessed, he said, I will make a great nation out of you. Which means I will begin with one nation. And through that nation, all the nations shall become one. So I love working with God. Be, 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 because he calls those things which are not as though they are. 
So when you are talking with God, you must open your spirit because he speaks in the future like today. He, he, he is so consumed with the whole fullness of himself that you need a revelation to walk with God. Because when he says now, in your mind, it is within this minute. But as far as God is concerned, he's talking about the eons. So you can be in your season, but not in your time. Because when God speaks, he speaks into the future, into the past, and into the present. God, if God says hallelujah, it echoes into the past, present, and the future. I declare today that you are a prophetic seed of God. I say you are a prophetic seed of God. Can I speak to somebody here today? Who am I speaking to today? Who am I speaking to into the nations? Who in the Facebook is receiving this word? So he, he had a dream concerning Abraham. Abraham was a dream. So each time God saw Abraham, he saw nations, he saw families. And, and Abraham said, one day, God, you've given me incredible promises, amazing beyond my life. And Abraham said, Lord, how do I know this? How do I see the tangibility of this? How can this become a reality? How can I cash it in the natural? Because you are spirit and you are speaking as a spirit. But I am flesh. How do I connect it into the natural? And God told Abraham, come out of your house. Let's have a journey here. He said, look up into the stars and count. Which means God was speaking to Abraham in the night season. That's why it's good to pray at night. Um, there's something about timings and prayer. I realize that there are certain things God will not speak to you in the day. But he will speak to you in the night. I have realized that as we have morning and then noon and then evening and night. So also God's words are spoken in these time zones of the day. It is believed that Jesus Christ did not die in the night. He died 3 p.m. So there's something about the portal of 3 p.m. There's an opening about that time zone. And when God brought Abraham out, he, he, he brought him out in the night, which means Abraham must have been conversing with God at night. Abraham had a midnight prayer meeting. And God said, come, come out, come out, come out. And they came out, and guess what God said? Now count the stars. I'm sure Abraham went one, two, three, four, no, four, that's another one, five, six, 54. And God said, yeah, I'm too frustrated, yeah. You are limited, isn't it? Yeah. So shall thy seed be. I am about to begin something in you. Watch this. And God was telling Abraham that I made you as one man, but in you have I put stars. All those stars you can't count are only a metaphor of what is in you. Abraham had no biological child yet, but he was already a father of nations. That's how a man can be a prophetic seed. You are only one man, but as far as God is concerned, you are a future. You are a future walking on earth. You are, you, 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 you are a glory walking on earth. You are a multitude walking on earth. You are a nation walking on earth. One of Abraham's seed, Isaac, when his wife was pregnant, the pregnancy was troubled, and she asked God, Rebecca said, Lord, why is this pregnancy so troubling? And God said, because there are two nations in you. One womb, two nations. But Abraham, one seed, all the nations. God speaks about nations. I am handling the subject of the world. Lord. Say hallelujah, somebody. Look at someone and say, I am a seed of glory. So God said, count the stars. And, and Abraham came and he, he couldn't. And God said, the last phrase of verse 5 says, so shall thy seed be. He didn't say seeds, seed. One seed, limitless stars. Amazing. One seed, limitless stars. So God can make one person and put limitless ideas in you. Verse 6, let's journey. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it for righteousness. 
unto him. Verse 7, he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord, God, whereby shall I know that I have inherited it? Watch this. One man with a vision and a land. God has a land for every vision. God has a land for every dream. Because, because dreams are spiritual. But on the land, they must be planted. They must be established for manifestation. We are standing on the land that God has blessed called the Northwest. It is an amazing land. It's a land with an incredible womb. Can you imagine that the wealthiest, the first wealthiest man in the world is from here and the second wealthiest is here? Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates, they are all here. Next door neighbors in one, one small geographic, geographic atmosphere. God is speaking to somebody here. Say hallelujah, somebody. I don't think it's ever happened on any part of the earth that the two wealthiest people can be just about one mile or, or five miles radius. And they are so growing and, and very alive and producing more. I believe the third wealthiest man is coming. And the fourth is coming. And the fifth is coming. And the sixth is coming. And they are all from the Sunshine Church. Can I hear us? Hallelujah, somebody. I feel like prophesying this morning. I am prophesying this morning because I'm speaking about the world. I'm speaking about the nations. I'm standing on the platform of reality, which is faith in God. Say Hosanna, somebody. Abraham said, Papa, Abba, Father, how do I know? How do I get this? And God said, let's, let's, let me show you a mystery. Verse 9, and God said unto him, take me and he for three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and lay each piece, one against another. But the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. Look at verse 11. Look at verse 11. Look, tell us somebody, look at verse 11. This is Abraham and God having a dialogue about the future, about the nations, about creativity that shall come out of the loins of a man, about God's, God's ultimate plan for humanity, all being put in the embryo of one man. What a moment of an encounter with God. And when God said, I want, to, I want to show you how you can receive the tangibility of my word. God said, it begins from sacrifice. Now bring a sacrifice. Put an altar. Build an, an, an altar. And give me these sacrifices. God gave him a specific uh, a list which should be sacrificed. And when that sacrifice was taking place, the Bible says that the birds of the sky, came to attempt to eat up the sacrifice. That was a satanic attack, a demonic attack to the dream that God was packaging. That was an attempt by darkness to invade the promise of God. I come to tell you that sometimes you haven't fought a warfare yet until you step into your destiny. Then, the, then the, car, the carcasses, the, 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 the wicked spirits begin to go there. I'm telling you, I'm not talking about warfare, but only God knows. Yeah, the day you lay hold on your prophecy, the day you are really in, in the groove of, your, of God's plan for your life, you must put on the whole armor of God. Because the devil is a thief and he loves to steal good things. The moment the prophecy is released, he sends his blackbirds. And their agenda is to attack. If they could stop it, if they could steal it, if they could destroy it, if they can destroy the dream, they want to destroy the vessel of the dream. So sometimes when somebody tells me I'm fighting warfare, my question is what dreams do you have? Because I have realized through scripture that warfare are always connected to good dreams. 
Lazy folks don't fight warfare. People with no dreams have nothing to contend because you have nothing to offer the devil. You have nothing that, that threatens the devil's plans. So he sends them in in the name of hallelujah. And it takes fights. It takes warfare. It, warfare simply is lay hold on your promises and don't let them go. The Bible says when those birds came, Abraham fought a warfare and, and drove them away. And they all went away. Then God stepped in. See, I'm listening to you. Well, if you have a prophecy from God, get ready to fight. See, I hear you. The Bible says that, verse 17. And it came to pass that when the sun went down, it was dark. Behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamb that passed between those pieces. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. I'm handling the subject, the covenant of souls. Because all the stars he saw, only one of them was his biological child, Isaac. But in Isaac... And as it was in Abraham, the future of all the, the nations were all in Isaac. So the devil thought that if I could stop this covenant, if I can stop this, this sacrifice, I can get the nations. You know, uh, we, we have been praying for years before Grace for All Nations was born. I'd been in ministry doing things of God before Grace for All Nations was born. God spoke to me about grace for all nations in, in February the year uh, 1990. It took nine years of prayer and fasting. Sometimes God will put me on one year of fasting, January to December. Six months. When I'm done, he says, get ready for another one. And for nine years until the seed, the dream died in me. In fact, I fought for this ministry, prayed so much, but it, at one point, it, it didn't matter to me at all whether I came to pass or not. I lost the, the anxiety about it. And when that seed died in me, then he said, now you can start. Grace for all nations. So I, I accept a corn of seed. A dream of seed dies. It abides alone. To imagine that God will speak to Abraham about stars, about a living future. But he will tell Abraham to put dead animals on the altar. Because a sacrifice doesn't become a reality unless it first dies. You don't give God a sacrifice of a cow when the cow is, is, is bleating, fighting on the altar. You must first kill it. Because someone has to kill your sacrifice and present it. Well, the, the Bible says that, that and, and when he had done that, are you listening please? When he had done that, suddenly he saw the vision of two Entities, a burning furnace, a burning furnace. I mean burning, which means it wasn't a little amber. It must have been a, a conglomeration of, of, of the, the, the combination of fires. Abraham saw these huge fires and they, and they came as one big whole ball of fire. By that time, God put Abraham to sleep like he put Adam to sleep. Well, I preached a message two weeks ago, and I said, I believe Abraham was the second Adam. He was the second Adam. Because the, 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 the scriptural package on Abraham are, 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 are just too accurate to fit the mode of Adam who lost it. And God had to repackage all things that, Ad, that Adam lost into this one man, Abraham. Say hallelujah, somebody. You have no clue what God has packaged in you. I have been repenting before God for many days now. Because reality is beginning to hit me as though I had never known my purpose before. And I said, Lord, man, if I knew this four, four years ago, if I knew this 12 years ago, my God, I see, I see, I see. And I said, Lord, remember mercy and let me finish my course. Because sometimes you do careless things, 
just not knowing what really is in you. If only you know what God has put in you, you will retrace your steps and get back on track. Because at the, at the ultimate day, on the day of glory, you don't want to fall short. On the day when God is requiring all that he has put in you to give an account of your purpose, your calling, your mandate, your oil, your vision, and your dream, and all that you stand for. I pray this day that you must fear God, and you must fear who he has made in you, because you don't know what he has put in you. Are you listening, please? And this huge, huge, huge flames of fire, and, and, and when this huge furnace of fire stepped into the sacrifice, there was a smaller one which also came along. Abraham was in deep sleep. I call him second Adam was in deep sleep. This time, it wasn't Eve that was being brought out. But nations, man, say Hosanna. And the Bible says the flame and the torch came and moved and walked in between the sacrifices and consumed them. And just consumed them, burned by fire. I call Abraham's covenant the covenant of fire. And the Bible says that day, God made a covenant. Guess what? When he made the covenant, it was the covenant which had the, 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 the composite, the reality of all the nations, past, present, and future. In Genesis 11, Nimrod was, was to try to build the Tower of Babel, and God scattered them all over the earth. But in Abraham, he gathered them all together. Under one name, all the nations are blessed. Say, I'm speaking to you. Say, you are speaking to me. Are you listening, please? Nations are in your mind. Nations are in your spirit. Nations are in your life. Begin to think international. Begin to think global. Because that's the DNA you carry. Say hallelujah, somebody. Well, in Genesis chapter 22, before I begin to conclude my message, Genesis 22, please, let's go. In the verse 14, it says, And Abraham called the name of that place, Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mountain of the Lord, it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord came unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, say the second time, and said, Myself, by myself have I sworn, says the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. So God, one more time, reiterates the prophecy. The stars of heaven. And as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Can I, can I hear an amen right there? Verse 18. Read with me, let's go aloud. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. You have obeyed my voice. God did not say that you have, you have looked at, my, the, at the trials you go through. God did not speak about trials. Those were unspoken part of the covenant. You don't even have to imagine it. You go through it. The prophecy comes with its own trials. That's why it's called a trial. There's a difference between persecution and trial. A persecution is what the devil tries to stop you with, to kill you, to cut you off. But a trial is your obedience in God and going beyond yourself and the challenges you face to become what God wants you to be. So the devil does, doesn't, have to try, doesn't have to fight you to go through trials. Is the trial of your faith. And with the dreams in your spirit, you need to understand that the trials come to complete the purpose. Through the trials, your muscles are built. Your revelation is opened. Your understanding is created into new dimensions and you hold on to that which God has for you because it is a wrestle. The devil tries to wrestle out of your hand what God has put into your spirit. Watch this. He said, in this shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Let me put this together here. God spoke about two things here. He said, the stars of heaven 
and the sun on the seashore. If you put the two together, nations. If you put the two together, the globe and the generations of life. Say, I am listening. Say, I'm listening. In Galatians chapter 3, Galatians 3, oh, hallelujah, from verse 13, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, been made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Watch this. God put the nations, their blessings, their future in Abraham. Abraham came to a place in God and said, God, how do I know this? And the way Abraham got it was through the sacrifice. We are the seed of Abraham in our generation. And we are also saying, Lord, how do I get all these blessings in Abraham? It also came by sacrifice on the cross. Through sacrifice, Abraham received the covenant. And through sacrifice on the cross, we also received the covenant. And because of Jesus Christ, Abraham's blessings are mine. Because, because, because the blessing has been released by sacrifice. So watch this. Say, I'm listening. So if we say, Abraham's blessings are mine, we are saying that we have ownership of the nations. Because God gave ownership of the nations to Abraham. And God said, in Abraham, shall all the nations be blessed. So if I say, Abraham's blessings are mine, God is telling me that in me, shall the nations be blessed. Grace for all nations. Salvation to all nations. And when God, is, when God looks at you, he is looking at nations. Let's go into the world and baptize the nations. Go in my power and teach the nations. Bring the nations back to me because we are nation bringing people in Abraham. Say hallelujah somebody. In the, in the Great Commission, the Bible says, let's look at it. Matthew chapter, chapter 28. Matthew tw chapter 28. Let's read from verse 18, please. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in earth, in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Say all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded thee. And lo, I am with you always to the end of the world. That phrase, I am with you always, means my presence. So, so the presence of God is connected to the Great Commission. As we go in the name of Jesus, why do we have the, the, the authority to go into the nations? Because we are seed of Abraham. Why do we have the grace to evangelize the world? Because we are the seed of Abraham. It is in our DNA to win souls. It is in our DNA to preach salvation. It is in our DNA to give the world back to Christ. It is in our DNA to go after the lost. Because God gave the loss to our father Abraham. And Jesus came to give it to us by the cross. Say hallelujah somebody. The day Billy Graham got saved, God saw souls in the nations. The day Rehard Bunke was saved, God saw the nations. The day you were saved, God saw the nations. Oh say Hallelujah. The gay God saved Joyce Meyer. God saw the nations. I see nations through you. I see nations through you. You are my battle axe, my instrument of war. With you will I fight the nations. With you will I overthrow the authority of darkness over the nations. And with you will I raise souls. Say hallelujah. Receive the anointing. See, I get it. So we don't have to tell you to go win souls. It's in your DNA. 
It's in your DNA. I said, it's in your DNA. The price has been paid. It's in your DNA. Say Hosanna. Yeah. Say Hosanna. Yeah. You know, you know, you all know that we, we have launched our 10 million soul campaign and we are we are on the way. We are on the way. I said, we are on the way. It is in the spirit of God. Give it to us. Say hallelujah, somebody. In conclusion, go back to Galatians 3, verse 13. Galatians 3, verse 13. You are about to see the visitation of the Lord because of the revelation you are receiving. The day you begin to understand who you are, that God has always used you and will always use you and plans to use you and design that he might use you to touch the lost souls of the kingdom, the day you have the revelation of authority to claim the anointing. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on the tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come. Say, my come. Say, my come. So, for, so after the cross, the blessing of Abraham began to have its full manifestation. Guess what? Abraham knew the covenant, but did not see its full manifestations. When Abraham was born, when, when God brought Abraham, he gave him the prophecy of the nations. When Isaac was born, God confirmed it through Isaac. When Jacob was born, confirmed it through Jacob. When Joseph was born, confirmed it through, through Jacob in Egypt. The Bible says all the nations came to Egypt to see Joseph, a seed of Abraham. Jesus is our Joseph. And in Jesus, all the nations are gathering. Guess what? Guess what? And the Bible says, and also we shall receive the promise of the Spirit. So this is what I want to say to make it easy. Through Abraham, we have faith for the nations. Through Jesus, we have the anointing, the revelation, the authority, the wisdom, the grace, the strength, the supernatural unction to bring to pass what the faith of Abraham has given to us. Say hallelujah. So hallelujah. Say hallelujah. I said, say hallelujah. There are certain miracles I don't see in church unless I am in a crusade. When, when I see souls, one of them was in India. And this, this, this boy whose tongue, he was deaf and dumb. And he was loose and began to speak. The, the entire crowd who were Hindus ran. I mean, almost about 98% of the crowd. Because they know what the Hindu God has done. But they have seen what the, the God of Christ has done. Why did, did that happen? Because in me, Abraham's covenant was speaking. Say hallelujah, somebody. I dare you to begin to see everybody on the street as Abraham seed. The stars of heaven. This is our future church folks. This is our seed of God. This is our seed of God's kingdom. Say hallelujah, somebody. God said to Abraham, I will make a great nation out of you. Then all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I believe that great nation is Israel. And out of Israel has come the church. What Israel was like Abraham. All the blessings in him. But it has taken the church to bring that blessing out into the nations. So, so you are a blessing carrier. You are a glory carrier. You are a salvation carrier. You are a redemption carrier. You are a restoration carrier. You are the carrier of the blessing the nations need. Say, I hear you. Look at verse, verse 29 of, of Galatians 3. He says, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. So what am I saying? I'm saying that when God, when God put Abraham to sleep, we, we have just seen that there was a burning furnace that showed up. And there was a lamb, a burning lamb, a torch, which also came along with him. The burning furnace was God the Father. The lamb, burning lamb, was Jesus. 
So that day, the father and the son came to make a covenant with Abraham. Why? The father and the son mean, means family. Because they were enacting the covenant of souls and families into Abraham. What was in heaven was now established in the covenant. And guess what? Abraham's covenant has everything that God can give to man. Everything. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. If you study it, it's a mystery that God can give somebody a favor, so much favor, and put so much into him. Even Jesus had to come to, 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 to confirm and establish Abraham's covenant. Abraham's covenant was like the storehouse. Jesus came to make it a reality to you and I. Today I come to tell you that the nations are crying and they are hungry for their Lord. And we have to make our Lord known. To the nations. Revelation 11 verse 15. Which is my conclusion. Say hallelujah somebody. Receive the anointing. I say receive the anointing. It says. And the, the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying. The kingdoms. The kingdoms of this world. The kingdoms of this world. The kingdoms of this world. The kingdoms of this world, the kingdoms of this world, from North Korea to South Korea, the kingdoms of this world, from the North Pole to the South Pole, the kingdoms of this world, from China, from Beijing to New York, the kingdoms of this world, from Cape Town to Cairo, the kingdoms of this world, from Egypt to Moscow, the kingdoms of this world, from means Belarus, to Canberra, Australia, the kingdoms of this world, from Seattle. Say hallelujah. From Seattle to Addis Ababa. From Addis Ababa to Lagos. From Lagos to Ottawa. From Ottawa to Alaska. The kingdoms of this world. Ah. See, hallelujah, somebody. I see Russians serving the Lord. I see Ethiopians serving the Lord. I see Australians serving the Lord. I see the Chinese. I see the Ghanaians. I see the Zimbabweans. I see the Americans. I see, I see, I see in my spirit nations running to the cross. Nations running to the cross. Nations running to the cross. I see, I see nations running to the cross. And there are many saved, but there is room for more. Ah, 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 ah. I was very embarrassed one day. When, when, when I was president of the Full Gospel Businessman, a chapter in Ghana, we went for our global, our, our national conference one day. And uh, so, so, so as, as I was a full rep then, and so I was walking through the crowd to my place in the front, and I saw uh, an old schoolmate of mine. And he stopped me in the foyer. He said, Emmanuel, so you never told me about Jesus. All those years we were in school. And you are here? Oh, man. I was glad he was saved. But I was embarrassed. After all the years, he was my friend. I never shared the gospel. And he was a Muslim. Half Lebanese, half Ghanaian. And I said, my friend, will you follow me? Will you forgive me? For all these years we've been friends, I never spoke to you about Jesus. And for him to see me as one of the leaders, he's just blown away. Because he was just a new convert. He can imagine that Emmanuel, what if I died before this day? Who am I speaking to today? The goodness of God is revealed when we win souls. When we go after them. Who will, who will tell them? Unless you open your mouth. 
who will bring them to the cross? Unless you endear them with the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him might be, might, 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 might be saved. This morning, I declare unto you that the anointing to save nations is upon earth. The Bible says that the kingdoms of this world, this present world, are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. So every generation saw this scripture. And it was their kingdom of their time. The kingdoms of this world, their world. That it, will, it was a, in, it's in a present continuous tense. So a hundred years from today, it's still relevant for the kingdoms of this world in hundred years time. 200 years past is still relevant. The kingdoms of the world should be for Christ. Because in Christ, the manifestation becomes real. Abraham never won a soul. He only laid the platform. Christ began to go after souls. Do you think, do you, do you think it's an accident that you are not born in the days of Abraham? Because you couldn't win a soul. God preserved you for this day. So you can be a soul winner. So when God was creating human beings, he picked this one and said, well, you are, you are, you are not to win souls. So you be, be a friend of Joseph. Uh, you, you day in the days of, of Gideon. You in the days of Abraham. You in the days of Isaac. But as for you, you are a soul winner. So we shall keep your seed in the last days. After the cross. Every human being born after the cross is a candidate to win souls. Because, that, because that's our assignment. We are blessed so we can become a blessing. We are saved so we can save. We are anointed so we can use the anointing, the power of God, to break yokes, set the captives free, and bring them into the house of the Lord. But the kingdoms of this world, folks, I'm telling you, if you see Beijing, if you see Ottawa, Canada, if you see America, what's happening? If you see England, Europe, if you see Russia, if you see beyond all these nations, all you see is souls, souls, souls. If you go to any international airport, all you see is souls, souls, souls. That's what God is all about. Say hallelujah, somebody. And you know what? See, I'm listening. When we all get to heaven, as saints, the place of our first arrival, Abraham's bosom. We shall all go through Abraham's bosom. The father that God made a covenant with for all the souls to come back to heaven. We shall go through his corridor. Abraham's bosom. Because in him were the souls. In him were the nations. But they were a prophecy. But in us, they are a reality. So I can imagine Abraham asking me when I get to heaven, how many souls did you come with? We are, we, I hope we shall say 10 million plus. Hallelujah. Sir. Because the day God spoke to us about 10 million, we had already won some souls. I'm telling you, we have, we have some souls in the nations. Pretty, pretty big. Hallelujah, somebody. But it's, it, it, it's like the day he spoke to us, 10 million, it's like a restart. It, it's like those ones don't count. They are all in eternity now. It's like a new beginning. And I am daring you to walk in the anointing. It takes anointing to win souls. It takes finances to win souls. So I declare this day, may you prosper that you can win souls. 
May your prosperity go beyond human understanding. I release upon you wealth. I release upon you success. I release upon you the anointing to break through. I release upon you the power to make wealth that we can win souls. Receive the anointing. Receive the blessing. Receive the breakthrough. Receive the mantle. Receive the mandate. Receive the revelation. Receive the keys. Receive the wisdom. Receive the dream. Receive the vision. In the name of Jesus. May God turn our cash to souls. Our wealth to souls. Our pedigree to souls. Our name to souls. Our anointing for souls. Our prosperity for souls. Because we are part of the covenant of souls. Oh, say hallelujah, somebody. I see the nations. Can Nigeria be saved in a day? Yeah. Can America be saved in a day? Yes. Can China be saved in a day? Yes. Can the Philippines be saved in a day? Yes. Can, can, can Canada be saved? Yes. Can South America be saved in one day? Can Brazil be saved? Tabon. Tutu Ben. I just spoke Portuguese. Hallelujah, somebody. Can Egypt be saved in one day? Can Saudi Arabia enjoy the love of God in one day? Can Dubai see the glory of God in one day? Can Seattle be saved in one day? I release the anointing. This is the reason why, as your pastor and as an apostle, I declare your prosperity established. Because we need your wealth. We need your revelation. We need your authority. The anointing is not only for souls, but also to make money. <laughs> Lift up your hands, Grandma. Kosaba. I feel the anointing. It's like a river in my bones. It's like fire in the, in the spirit. Receive transformation. Receive the anointing to transform nations by your technology. For Christ, receive. Facebook is for souls. <laughs> Ah, I said Facebook is for souls. Ah, social media platforms are for souls. Don't ever put any silly thing on Facebook anymore. If it doesn't talk about Christ and He crucified, don't go there at all. Because you'll pay for it on the judgment day. It's not for you. It's not about you. It's for souls. Share the love of God. Share the glory of God. Share the favor of God. Share Christ. And he crucified. I see open heavens. I see angels descending to advance God's purpose for your life. The covenant of souls, number three. Father, we give you thanks. With your hands lifted, everybody, wherever you are. Receive a fresh oil. Power in your hands. To, to turn the marketplace into a soul winning engine. To turn your society into soul winning networks. To turn your neighborhood into a salvation hub. May your life be as a true seed of Abraham. In thee shall all the families of the earth be saved. Receive salvation anointing. Receive the Savior's anointing. Receive the Savior's revelation. Receive the Savior's power to produce results. It's not about you anymore. It's about souls. Forget about your challenges. Let's win the souls. Father, we give you praise. Everybody say after me, Lord Jesus, I receive my mandate and the revelation to win souls. If you can use anything, you can use me. I am a seed of Abraham and I call upon you, O oh God. Fulfill your covenant in my life. Now and forevermore. And I connect my seed to this word in Jesus' name. 
well, I wouldn't be able to finish this thing until I make an altar call. You cannot hear a message like this and, come into a, and not come into alignment with your purpose. I'm not talking about you being saved. I'm talking about you fulfilling the reason why you were born. It includes saving souls. It includes God using you to give others the opportunity to know Christ and he crucified. I pray that you will not go to heaven as a financially wealthy person but have you no know, resume for souls. If you have ever been saved and you've lost your zeal, your fire, your edge of the first love and you want to come back and say, God, you made me for a purpose. I have transgressed. I have digressed. I have moved my, from the pathway. I want to come back home. Lift up your hand and I'll pray with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You say, Lord, put upon me such a magnetic fire for souls. And a hunger and a passion to win the lost. Lift up your hand. And pray after me. Lord Jesus, forgive me my naivety. Forgive me my sins. Wash away my transgressions and blot out the memory of my sins. Restore me in your sight. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life. The soul winning book. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me opportunities to bring your glory into the life of homes and families and nations through the gifts you've given to me. I thank you, Lord, for saving my souls and the souls of many through my salvation. Amen. Clap your hands. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Say hallelujah. You know, uh, we, will, we will be taking our offerings. And I am reminded of uh, when we had the Benahin crusade. When uh, the Lord said, host Benahin. So, so when, when he was coming... And the Lord spoke to me and said, Emmanuel, you pay for the entire venue, not, not your church. Well, so I called a friend and I said, we have to make this happen. And we paid for it. And it was a powerful conference. Wasn't it powerful? My point here is, my point here is, it takes cash to lay the platform for the souls. May the next Benahim conference, <clears throat> may you pay for it. May God give you the cash. The next Joyce Meyer conference, may you pay for it. The next Rea Bonke conference, may you pay for it. Can you imagine how many souls that would come into your account in heaven if you had paid for all the Billy Graham crusades, which you missed, but a new opportunity is coming. Hallelujah, somebody. Look at somebody and say, don't let somebody take your opportunity. You know, it's our time and it's our prosperity. Say hallelujah, somebody. Lift up your right hand. Say, Lord Jesus, give through me in this offering. Amen. And those who are watching from around the globe, thank you for always standing with us. Thank you for your emails and your powerful encouragement which we receive. Thank you for your support in every way. Please give and help us. Say amen.